Next, we are going to talk about calculating convectivity transfer coefficient for external flow over a sphere. So this is our next topic. As in the previous cases, so the convectivity transfer coefficient local and average will depend on Reynolds number and Prandt number. And for the case of local, it will also depend on the position. And the drag coefficient, which will depend on the Reynolds number. So, for a spherical coordinates, the drag coefficient can be calculated by 24 over Reynolds number uh, when, the Reno when the flow is laminar. And if you would like to calculate the average, um, average convectivity transfer coefficient, we have one equation that is available to us. This equation is called Whittaker equation. So this equation is, again, is a function of Reynolds number prime number and a viscosity. And please pay attention that this equation has to be evaluated at t infinity. Everything is evaluated at t infinity, not not t film. Okay, so this is an exception. So this is the second equation that we use t infinity rather than t film. Okay. So the valid the validity is shown in here. This equation is valid when the prime number is between 0 0.7 and 380, and when when the Reynolds number is greater than 3.5 and less than uh, 7.6 times 10 to the 4. And here mu s is the viscosity evaluated at surface temperature of the object. So if this is T s, the fluid is at T infinity. So we evaluate all the properties at T infinity and surface temperature is used for evaluation of mu, mu s. Okay, and this is fairly straightforward uh, equation. So now let's try to show, uh, let's uh, solve an example to illustrate this concept. Let's say we have a hot steel ball, which is at 300 Celsius. And we would like to cool it with air at 25 degrees Celsius with a velocity of 3 meter per second. And we do know the diameter of the sphere. This is 0 0.25 meter. And we are asked to find, so what is the, the convective transfer coefficient? And how long does it take to cool this to 200 degrees Celsius? Okay, so part A, find H bar. Part B, find the time it takes to cool it down uh, to 200 degrees Celsius. So now let's switch uh, to, to the one point here. Uh, okay, one note here, okay. Okay, so now, Example two, uh, flow over sphere. So what do we know? We know Ts, T infinity, diameter, velocity. So what are we trying to find? Find H bar and from there T required for cooling from 200 degrees Celsius from 200 degrees Celsius sorry 300 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius so let's write down our assumptions steady state is the steady state process Radiation is negligible. Radiation is negligible. Uh, air is ideal gas. Air is ideal gas. It's an ideal gas. So let's look up the properties here. So again, this equation. Uh, as we stated earlier, so we need to we need to look up the properties. So the problem is, so we have normally, so we need to use so for the spherical coordinates, the equation that is available to us uh, is here. 
Uh, so this is the equation that we need to use. Okay. And uh, we have we have to use this equation here. So now, so the problem is we need to evaluate everything at uh, t infinity, and this is a ts. Okay. So at t infinity is the temperature of the uh, temperature of the air this is the temperature of the surface so temperature will change the object is initially 300 degrees Celsius and then it's going to change to 200 degrees Celsius let's make it a little larger so that we can see it object is initially at 300 degrees Celsius and then it's going to change to 200 degrees Celsius so this means there is a change in temperature so that means T surface also changes uh, so that means we need to consider this change due to the cooling of the object. Uh, so that means we have to calculate T surface average. So this is T surface initial plus T surface final divided by 2. This is going to give us 250 degrees Celsius. So when we are looking up Ts, surface temperature, we need to look up the properties at this temperature. So in particular, this is for mu s. Mu s is 2.76 times 10 to the minus 5 kilogram per meter per second this is for air at 250 degrees Celsius if you all like to see this a little better so we can just check this table here uh, so let's put this one here so just for your information so we are looking for mu value here mu for air mu and we need to read this at, uh, at 250 degrees Celsius. So I need to add uh, to 273. So it will be close to 525. So it will be it will be in here somewhere in here. So you need to do interpretation to calculate the viscosity. So everything needs to be multiplied by 10 to the minus 7. So the viscosity will be 273 times 10 to the minus 7, uh, 7 or 2.70 uh, so this is 76 times 10 to the minus 5 so this is the viscosity we read it from uh, properties of air in table A4 okay so now we need to read other properties so we need to read properties um, at uh, T infinity so T infinity is 25 degrees Celsius so we need to read the property K K fluid, which is air, 0 0.02551 watt per meter Kelvin, and mu is 1.849, 10 to the minus 5 kilogram meter per second. And then we need to read the kinematic viscosity, which is 1.56 times 10 to the minus 5 meter square per second. And then we need to read the prime number is 0 0.7296. So again, if you want to read the properties, this is about very close to 300 Kelvin. Very close to 300 Kelvin. So the properties here, uh, thermal conductivity. So it will be slightly, so this is, you know, we are at 298 Kelvin. So there is a slight change here instead of 0, 0.0. 263 we have this due to interpretation there is three a uh, fifth degree difference and then viscosity again here so it will be very close to this value and kinematic viscosity will be very close to this value here and the prime number should be uh, in between these two okay so now so we calculate the Reynolds number based on the surface te temperature so this is Incoming velocity times diameter divided by kinematic viscosity. Incoming velocity is 3 meter per second. Diameter is 0 0.25. And divide this by kinematic viscosity. 1.562 10 to the minus 5 meter square per second. So we get 4.8 times 10 to the 4. So, and the prime number, we read it here. So that means we can calculate the average Nusselt number which is 
h average d over k fluid. And the equation we have is here. So we'll just uh, move it here. So we have this equation here. Okay, so we want to we want to write this equation here. So Reynolds number will be 4.8 times 10 to the 4. 4.8 times 10 to the 4. Round number is 0 0.7296. And mu s, we read this as uh, 2.76 10 to the minus 5. Mu infinity is 1.85 10 to the minus 5. So we evaluate everything and we get 135. So that means h bar is equal to k fluid over diameter times nu, which is uh, 0 0.0255 divided by 0, 0 0.25 multiplied by 135. So 18, sorry, 13.8 watt meter squared per Kelvin. This is h bar. So now we have solved part A. So part A was focused on finding uh, uh, so this is analysis and this is part a so part a was focused on finding h bar part b is finding the time it takes uh, to cool this object so you can use lump capacitance method here so we already talked about this so we have a lump capacitance method um, alternatively alternatively so you can use the following equation. So we need to cool this object from 300 to 200 degrees Celsius, okay? So if you want to estimate a rough, rough estimate, lump capacitance is more precise, more precise. If you want to calculate uh, if you want to have a rough estimate, M C P delta T will be the total energy that is going to be released by the by the steel object. So this is basically mass is rho times V C P delta T. Rho is basically pi d cube over six. So this is the volume times rho times C P times delta T. And if you plug everything here, so we get 65, so 0.9 kilogram, this is the mass. CP is 480 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. This is kilogram. And then the temperature difference is 300 minus 200. So we'll have uh, 3. Sorry, 3,000. 163 kilojoule so this is the mcp delta t and if you want to know uh, time so so time is q times delta t is going to give us q total so that means delta t will be this is a rough equation delta t will be equal to q total over the heat transfer rate so that is 3.3163 times 10 to 3 joule divided by Q. Q is basically uh, H average A surface T surface average minus T infinity. T infinity is 25 degrees Celsius, T surface average, or let's use T surface average, is 250. A surface is, this is a, it says sphere pi d squared, H bar, we just calculated this to be 13.8. So if you plug in everything, you'll get 5,185 seconds, okay? Again, this is one way. This We haven't analyzed the problem this way. Again, this is not very precise, but it will give us a rough estimate. If we really want, we can focus on, uh, we can go back to chapter 5 
So we can go to, uh, so this is the lump capacitance equation. So we can actually evaluate the same thing. So here, uh, so we need to find the T. Uh, so T final will be 200, T infinity is 25, T initial is 300, T infinity is 25, H is 13.8, AS is pi D square, rho times V is the mass. This is uh, basically 65.9 kilogram. CP is 480 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. So we can actually find T and it should give us somehow a similar number. So it shouldn't be in order of magnitude difference. I don't have the number with me, but it, I expect that this, this should be at least in between 4,000 and 6,000. Okay, that's my expectation. It shouldn't be too far different. And this is more precise way to calculate the time. And you can do the other way. So, okay, so that is example two. And how how we can how to this this example was showing us how to estimate convective heat transfer coefficient for a flow over a sphere, and that's it.